All right, here is our inventions unit. I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the other inventors from long time ago, and then we'll go talk about maybe now. So for example, I'm gonna put this, take the ring off and we'll put them up here on the board so then Miss Kathy can zoom in to see pictures. Oh, there we go. All right, so this guy, his name is Levi Strauss, and he is a German entrepreneur, which means it was his company he invented, and he invented the blue jeans. How many of you wear blue jeans? Then we have yep, Louis Pasteur, and he is a French chemist and inventor, and sorry if I say the names wrong, I'll do my best. He invented pasteurization, which sterilizes food like the milk that we drink. Came from his name, which is kind of cool. Same with Levi's. Oh yeah, thank you for noticing <laughs> that, and I knew that. Then we have Louis Braille. Hmm, what are what he invented? He was born in France, and he became blind at a young age and invented Braille. And we've had an experience with that kindergarten, first grade friends um, during our letters of the week. And we've learned how the dots help make the uh, rays so those that are blind can still read. And then we have Earl Dixon and he is an American inventor and he invented the Band-Aid, which we all use. And this is a cool one. This is actually a woman who invented, her name is Mary Anderson. She's an American inventor and we probably needed it this week. We invented, she invented the windshield wipers. Those are always a good one to have on your car. This one we've already talked about, Benjamin Franklin, American writer and inventor. One of the things he's, many things he's famous for, but one of them they mentioned was the lightning rod to keep the lightning away from the buildings. Then we have Samuel Morris, which was commented in one of the things we talked about. Telegraph, Jefferson? Yes. No. No. The other Edison? One. Yes, Edison. Good job. Good memory, Miss Kathy. Miss Kathy's learning too. I'm learning a lot, guys. <laughs> American inventor and painter, and he invented the Morse code, which is has dots and dashes, and it helps you communicate without using talking and using words. Then we have George Washington Carver. He was an American scientist, educator, and a former slave, and he invented hundreds of products just from peanuts. So, so all these things that we enjoy Ooh, eating, minus some friends. Yeah, I wonder if he invented peanut butter. Ooh, maybe we'll have to check into that, but many products. Then we have, oh, I don't know how to say his name. James Naismith. Naismith, that sounds mm -hmm. good. He was a Canadian PE teacher. He invented the basketball. And then we have Thomas Edison that we just talked about, the American inventor, inventing the phonograph and the incandescent light bulb and many other things as we found out. This one we're, the guy we're gonna talk about next week, Alexander Graham Bell. He was born in Scotland and he invented the telephone. That's an older version of one. And we also talked about these two brothers, Orville Wright and Wilbur Wright, American inventors that invented the airplane. I'm gonna take some of these off so we can go from the top. Then we have Henry Ford. What do you think he invented? Henry Ford being the last name. He's an American inventor and he invented the assembly line so that the automobiles could be built more efficiently or quicker. And this is a name that we talked about, K1 Friends, Leonardo da Vinci. You all thought he was an artist. He is, but he's also an Italian inventor. And he sketched an early airplane, helicopter, and submarine. So he gave ideas to some of the others that helped make it actually happen. Then we have Garrett Morgan, an American inventor who invented the traffic signal and gas mask to keep everyone safe. And then Galileo Galilei. Italian mathematician, astronomer, and physicist. He invented the thermometer and many other things, but this is just the one thing he mentioned. Then we have another woman inventor, Ruth Wakefield. Ooh, she's making me hungry now. An American inventor invented chocolate chips and the chocolate chip cookie. We had a family. Yep. That was their favorite invention. It was one of the parents, so <laughs> there it is. And this is the woman who did it. Then we have Johannes Gutenberg. He was a German craftsman and inventor. He invented the pr printing press, which was another um, parent's favorite and Miss Beth's oh, yeah. favorite invention. And then we have Elias Howe, an American inventor. He improved the sewing machine, which if you know how to sew, that is a good thing to know. And then our last one we're going to talk about is Eli Whitney. He was an American inventor who invented the cotton gin um, so he could process all of that. So looking at all of these pictures, do you think all of these inventors were a long time ago or just now? Each of them has two dates, and what those two dates is when they were born and when they died. So none of these inventors right now, I'm looking, are alive. 
So do you think anyone is inventing still now? If you said yes, you are correct. Do you think kids can invent things? Absolutely. So I'm gonna read just one invention from here and then, and it's just two pages and it was kind of a fun one. It's called the Crayon Saver. And this boy named Robbie Marcusi, there's a picture of him. He invented what he's calling the, well, he thought about it, the crayon saver. So let me read a little bit about what it says. <clears throat> like most kids, Robbie Marcusi loves to color. And of course his crayons always break or wear down. And then they're too short to use because they can't be held easily. How many of you have some of those right now in your class? home? Broken crayons. Robbie calls these short crayons nubbies. <laughs> Between Robbie and his sister, they had a whole can of nubbies and nobody ever used them. And Robbie wanted to figure out a way to use the nubbies. They were perfectly good. They just needed some extra sort of holder that would make them longer. Then they wouldn't be wasted. So Robbie thought about a holder that would work like a push-up pop does. How many of you have had one of those? It's one of my favorite things to eat. So that's how he was thinking. He was using his brain. This is my problem. How can I solve it? So he thought of that maybe, using that something like a push-up. He could put the nubbies inside a thin paper tube, cut it to the length of the crayon, and something would push it up. A paper drinking straw is about the width of a crayon. So Robbie thought that it would make a perfect holder. A short screw pushed it inside the straw and it could move the crayon up and down. The paper straw didn't work as well. So just like all the other inventors, he tried things and it didn't work so well. So the crayon got stuck or the straw ripped. So finally, Robbie made a discovery. The straw from a sports bottle is a little wider than a paper straw. How many of you have had those at home? Maybe you could even use it now. Who knows? The straw from the sports bra is there. So since it's made from plastic, it's stronger too. And a plastic crayon holder would last a long time. Robbie's teacher, Mrs. Andrews, thought Robbie's crayon saver was a hit. Not only had he found a way to keep from wasting crayons, he designed something that a lot of kids would like to use. Robbie's crayon saver won a blue ribbon at his school invention fair. As part of his school's invention program, Robbie and his class learned about patents, which we've talked a little bit about too, that when you create something, invent something that you think is gonna be amazing, you file for a patent. Mrs. Andrews gave Robbie a mock patent for the crayon saver. Robbie never really considered patenting the crayon saver or trying to sell it, but somebody else did. Oh my goodness. About a year after he invented the crayon saver, Robbie and his family saw an article at their local paper about an almost identical product. Robbie was shocked and disappointed. He wonders if the manufacturer copied his invention. Robbie is not inventing anymore. He's a state champion gymnast. So he's putting his energy into other activities. So even as, as your age, you guys can think of something. You think of something that you want to fix, a problem. Think of anything in the world. So this is your task, something you want to invent. What would you invent that would help you or your parents or a classroom? Um, some of the inventions that these kids have done was, let's see, let's read some more. We're not going to read them, but we'll talk about. Let's see. Oh, let's find the first one. An edible pet food spoon. So when you spoon out your cat food, she uses it, it's edible so the dog, can, the cat can eat it instead of seeing that. Or the prosthetic catch and throw device. So it was something that he would catch something and it would throw it out for those that didn't have a hand because that would help those that don't have an arm. That's a cool one. Then we have the two door mailbox. The mailman puts one in and you take Ooh, your mail out. That's a good idea. <laughs> So yeah, so lots of things. This is dial a fish. He wanted to, he wanted a pet fish, but mom needed to make sure if they went on vacation, the pet would get fed. So he figured out a way to dial a phone and it would feed his pet fish while they were on vacation. The all-in-one washer and dryer, wash your clothes and dry it. I would it. love that. <laughs> so it's just different, thing. a jump rope belt. So you always have something to do. So lots of things, a fishy's neighborhood. So this one, they love to fish when he goes fishing. Oh, the lures float on the water. I'm trying to see what this one is at. I didn't get a chance to read this one. I have an idea, why not invent a biodegradable fishing lure? That makes sense because sometimes they fall off the line and it would go into the river or wherever you're fishing. So lots of kids are inventing things and you can too. So think of something 
you would want to problem fix it, write about it in your journal, draw a picture of what it would look like. I can't see what you guys are gonna invent. And we'll see you later, bye.